This part tells of the unlimited possibilities of the universal mind, which is the life principle of every atom in existence, and explains how this mind is differentiated in form. It tells of the most marvelous piece of mechanism which has ever been constructed, and tells how the effect which will be produced depends entirely upon the mechanism to which it is attached. It tells why we should all become familiar with the mechanism, so as to secure the effects which we desire. The power to which it can be attached is unlimited, and we can accordingly secure an effect we desire when we become familiar with the mechanism and understand how to make the proper connections. An understanding of this part will enable you to plan courageously and execute fearlessly, because you will have come into a knowledge of the source of all power, and this will determine your course in life, bringing you into contact with all that is strongest and best and most desirable. This part will give you an excellent understanding of the most wonderful piece of mechanism which has ever been created. A mechanism whereby you may create for yourself health, strength, success, prosperity, or any other condition which you desire. Necessities are demands, and demands create action, and actions bring about results. The process of evolution is constantly building our tomorrows out of our todays. Individual development, like universal development, must be gradual with an ever-increasing capacity and volume. The knowledge that if we infringe the rights of others, we become moral thorns and find ourselves entangled at every turn of the road should be an indication that success is contingent upon the highest moral ideal, which is the greatest good to the greatest number. Aspiration, desire, and harmonious relations constantly and persistently maintained will accomplish results. The greatest hindrance is erroneous and fixed ideas. To be in tune with eternal truth, we must possess poise and harmony within. In order to receive intelligence, the receiver must be in tune with the transmitter. Thought is a product of mind, and mind is creative. But this does not mean that the universal will change its modus operandi or suit us to our ideas, but it does mean that we can come into harmonious relationship with the universal, and when we have accomplished this, we may ask anything to which we are entitled, and the way will be made plain. The universal mind is so wonderful that it is difficult to understand its utilitarian powers and possibilities and its unlimited creative effects. We have found that this mind is not only all intelligence, but all substance. How, then, is it to be differentiated in form? How are we to secure the effect which we desire? Ask any electrician what the effect of electricity will be, and he will reply that electricity is a form of motion and its effect will depend upon the mechanism to which it is attached. Upon this mechanism will depend whether we shall have heat, light, power, music, or any of the other marvelous demonstrations of power to which this vital energy has been harnessed. What effect can be produced by thought? The reply is that thought is mind in motion, just as wind is air in motion, and its effect will depend entirely on the mechanism to which it is attached. Here, then, is the secret of all mental power. It depends entirely on the mechanism which we attach. What is this mechanism? You know something of the mechanism which was invented by Edison, Bell, Marconi, and other electrical wizards by which place and space and time have become only figures of speech, but did you ever stop to think that the mechanism which has been given you for transforming the universal, omnipresent, potential power was invented by a greater inventor than Edison? We are accustomed to examining the mechanism of the implements which we use for tilling the soil, and we try to get an understanding of the mechanism of the motor car which we drive, but most of us are content to remain in absolute ignorance of the greatest piece of mechanism which has ever come into existence, the brain of man. Let us examine the wonders of this mechanism. Perhaps we shall thereby get a better understanding of the various effects of which it is the cause. In the first place, there is a great mental world in which we live and move and have our being. This world is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. It will respond to our desire in direct ratio to our purpose and faith. The purpose must be in accordance with the law of our being, that is, it must be creative or constructive. 
our faith must be strong enough to generate a current of sufficient strength to bring our purpose into manifestation. As thy faith is, so be it unto thee, bears the stamp of scientific test. The effects which are produced in the world without are the result of the action and reaction of the individual upon the universal. That is the process which we call thinking. The brain is the organ through which this process is accomplished. Think of the wonder of it all. Do you love music, flowers, literature, art? Or are you inspired by the thought of ancient or modern genius? Remember, every beauty to which you respond must have its corresponding outline in your brain before you can appreciate it. There is not a single virtue or principle in the storehouse of nature which the brain cannot express. The brain is an embryonic world ready to develop at any time as necessity may arise. If you can comprehend that this is a scientific truth and one of the wonderful laws of nature, it will be easier for you to get an understanding of the mechanism by which these extraordinary results are being accomplished. The nervous system has been compared to an electric circuit with its battery of cells in which force is originated and its white matter to insulated wires by which the current is conveyed. It is through these channels that every impulse or desire is carried through the mechanism. The spinal cord is the great motor and sensory pathway by which messages are conveyed to and from the brain. Then, there is the blood supply, plunging through the veins and arteries, renewing our energy and strength. The perfectly arranged structure upon which the entire physical body rests, and finally the delicate and beautiful skin, clothing the entire mechanism in a mantle of beauty. This, then, is the temple of the living God, and the individual I is given control, and upon his understanding of the mechanism which is within his control will the result depend. Every thought sets the brain cells in action. At first, the substance upon which the thought is directed fails to respond. But if the thought is sufficiently refined and concentrated, the substance finally yields and expresses itself perfectly. This influence of the mind can be exerted upon any part of the body causing the elimination of any undesirable effect. A perfect conception and understanding of the laws governing in the mental world cannot fail to be of inestimable value in the transaction of business, as it develops the power of discernment and gives a clearer understanding and appreciation of facts. The man who looks within instead of without cannot fail to make use of the mighty forces which will eventually determine his course in life and so bring him into vibration with all that is best, strongest, and most desirable. Attention or concentration is probably the most important essential in the development of mind culture. The possibilities of attention, when properly directed, are so startling that they would hardly appear credible to the uninitiated. The cultivation of attention is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful man or woman and is the very highest personal accomplishment which can be acquired. The power of attention can be more readily understood by comparing it with a sunglass in which the rays of sunlight are focused. They possess no particular strength as long as the glass is moved about and the rays directed from one place to another. But let the glass be held perfectly still and let the rays be focused on one spot for any length of time and the effect will become immediately apparent. So with the power of thought. Let power be dissipated by scattering the thought from one object to another, and no result is apparent. But focus this power through attention or concentration on any single purpose for any length of time, and nothing becomes impossible. A very simple remedy for a very complex situation, some will say. All right, try it. You who have had no experience in concentrating the thought on a definite purpose or object. Choose any single object and concentrate your attention on it for a definite purpose for even ten minutes. You cannot do it. The mind will wander a dozen times and it will be necessary to bring it back to the original purpose and each time the effect will have been lost and at the end of the ten minutes nothing will have been gained because you have not been able to hold your thoughts steadily to the purpose. It is, however, through attention that you will finally be able to overcome obstacles of any kind that appear in your path onward and upward, and the only way to acquire this wonderful power is by practice. Practice makes perfect, in this as in anything else. In order to cultivate the power of attention, 
Bring a photograph with you to the same seat in the same room in exactly the same position as heretofore. Examine it closely at least ten minutes. Note the expression of the eyes, the form of the features, the clothing, the way the hair is arranged. In fact, note every detail shown in the photograph carefully. Now cover it and close your eyes and try to see it mentally. If you can see every detail perfectly and can form a good mental image of the photograph, you are to be congratulated. If not, repeat the process until you can. This step is simply for the purpose of preparing the soil. In part seven, we shall be ready to sow the seed. It is by such exercises as these that you will finally be able to control your mental moods, your attitude, your consciousness. Great organizers are learning to withdraw from the multitude more and more that they may have more time for planning, thinking, and generating the right mental mood. Successful businessmen are constantly demonstrating the fact that it pays to keep in touch with the thought of other successful businessmen. A single idea may be worth thousands of dollars, and these ideas can come only to those who are receptive, who are prepared to receive them, who are in a successful frame of mind. Men are learning to place themselves in harmony with the universal mind. They are learning the unity of all things. They are learning the basic methods and principles of thinking, and this is changing conditions and multiplying results. They are finding that circumstances and environment follow the trend of mental and spiritual progress. They find that growth follows knowledge, action follows inspiration, opportunity follows perception. Always the spiritual first, then the transformation into the infinite and illimitable possibilities of achievement. As the individual is but the channel for the differentiation of the universal, these possibilities are necessarily inexhaustible. Thought is the process by which we may absorb the spirit of power and hold the result in our inner consciousness until it becomes a part of our ordinary consciousness. The method of accomplishing this result by the persistent practice of a few fundamental principles, as explained in this book, is the master key which unlocks the storehouse of universal truth. The two great sources of human suffering at present are bodily disease and mental anxiety. These may be readily traced to the infringement of some natural law. This is no doubt owing to the fact that so far knowledge has largely remained partial. But the clouds of darkness which have accumulated through long ages are beginning to roll away, and with them many of the miseries that attend imperfect information. In the words of Larson. That a man can change himself, improve himself, recreate himself, control his environment, and master his own destiny is the conclusion of every mind that is wide awake to the power of right thought in constructive action.